Good morning, and thank you to the Chamber for giving us the opportunity to uh, talk about the Destination Marketing Organization. It's the perfect timing for that. But before I get started, I want to ask who in this room has been a tourist? We know Ken recently has been in Disney World, but who else here has traveled somewhere, stayed overnight somewhere? That's it. No one's gone out. Okay. <laughs> so what I want to do is today I want to kind of show the us, the, the back side of it, what it takes to have individuals like yourself to come and travel into our community, which we love dearly. So where it all begin? Okay, so I want to give you an oversight of how the funding for this organization actually takes place. There's actually a law. There's a Pennsylvania law that mandates that hotel operators need to collect a 3% tax, hotel rental room tax, for every night that an individual is staying up to 30 days. So if you, um, how that works is they need to collect and remit those taxes to the county treasurer's office who generates a report, and currently the, the arrangement is that 35% of those collected taxes do go to help support the Lebanon Expo Center. And then the remaining dollars that the Destination Marketing Organization will receive is going to be used to market and to promote tourism in and throughout the Lebanon Valley. So it's law and the process is being compliant with the law for the hotel operators, as I mentioned, is they do need to collect that tax and remit it back to the county treasurer's office. And so, Greg, would you be so kind? Um, just give me a snapshot. Right now on inventory, we have 906 rooms in a variety of different bed and breakfasts, hotels, all different assets of it. Um, they're collecting in 2013, the treasurer's office collected 231,000. And if you think about that, a room night that was $100, they would be collecting $3 remitting it to the county for taxes. So that accumulates for every hotel room. And then in 2014, uh, what's on record is 253,000 worth of tax collection. So, Greg, if you want to go to the next one. So what is tourism? Uh, we define tourism as any individual traveling at least 50 miles to get to a destination, and they could stay overnight, or it's a day trip, which would include dining, food and beverage, maybe some attractions, all those different aspects. That's what is defined as tourism. So we need to attract people from at least 50 miles into our area to enjoy Lebanon County. And I wanted to share, there's just a brief sampling here of what tourism aspects or segments are. And traditional tourism would be what we would all think of, coming to stay at this hotel overnight, going to a restaurant, going to the Cornwall Iron Furnace, experiencing all those aspects. That would be traditional tourism. And what uh, Chris is saying, we have agritourism. Think of those places like the Richards Market, when they have the corn maze, where we go apple picking. That's the intentional going to an agricultural business and supporting that business. So that would be defined under ag agritourism. Heritage tourism is where individuals like to go and experience a real depiction of a place or people. So the uh, historical society, Historic Shapers Town, all those aspects within our community would fall under the heritage tourism, which is, we have a lot of rich heritage in our community, so this is a huge opportunity. And then ecotourism is basically responsible travel for individuals to experience something like Middle Creek and the wildlife, something that they're, we're trying to preserve. And these are very eco-friendly, eco-conscious individuals that want to go and uh, appreciate and preserve in different areas and the natural habitats and culture. So that's just a brief synopsis of what tourism might be. The next slide I want to talk to you is about truly the impact of tourism on the state of Pennsylvania. Currently, we are the seventh most visited state. We used to be the fourth, and the correlation between dropping from the fourth to the seventh, in 2004, the state government invested $22 million in the state tourism. That's a nice amount of money. We're dealing, though, also our competition around the state, New York State, Ohio, and the Washington, D.C., they're infusing their budgets for about 30 or plus million dollars. In 2014, though, the state only invested $3 million <coughs> as a state to encourage tourism. So it's really falling back onto the individual counties as well. Tourism is the second largest industry. There's so many people employed with this tourism, and we have to be very cognizant of that um, and supporting it. And the researchers show that for every $1 invested in tourism, 
the return on that investment is going to be $25. So let's put this into example locally. If the destination marketing organization were to invest $100,000 in our marketing efforts to promote the variety of different wonderful things that we can do in Lebanon County, potentially there is a return of investment of $250,000 coming back into our county. So that's very significant. As a state, in 2013, $37.2 billion was spent by travelers coming to our state. That's significant. If it weren't without those travelers, if it weren't without tourism, every resident of Pennsylvania, every 4.9 million household, will be paying an additional $810 more in taxes. Do you want to pay an additional $810 more in taxes annually? No. So this is a great opportunity for you to understand and realize the impact of your own pocket that you're saving by encouraging and increasing tourism within our community because it does impact a lot of our um, households specifically. And the next slide that I want to talk to you about is for any of the businesses that may be represented here that could have an impact on tourism, this hopefully might give you just a little bit of insight or maybe you could use this in your operation in some way to help encourage some additional dollars into your operation. So the first trend that is happening with travel is our, the impact of millennials. And I don't know if we have millennials in this room, but a millennial falls in the age group of 18 to 30 years old. And this category of group, they really are enjoying more of the urban travel versus the resort destinations. They are traveling with larger groups organized groups and efforts and kind of going out there and really experiencing different aspects of uh, travel opportunities. Uh, and they're really traveling in pursuit of their interests and different activities. So they have a different experience that they're, they're looking for. I uh, love this. Trend number two, seniors are unstoppable, correct? Uh, what this study is saying is that there are 1.3 to 1.6 billion seniors worldwide and this segment of travel are the most demanding. They are they're looking for critical aspects of customer service, and they one bad opportunity is this going to be a negative negative experience for them. And if you think about this group, how many um, in the seniors they're on social media now more so than they have been in the past, and so they may be sharing some of their experiences also on social media. And then we have trend number three: the rise of conspicuous leisure. And, which is an interesting term, um, these individuals, they go for visible leisure for the sake of displaying social status. And the reason why it's rising is when you have social media sites such as Instagram and Facebook, they're, how many, you know, you're on, your friends are on Facebook and you're seeing all these the glorious vacations that they're taking. They like to have that aspect of their travel. They want to share that with others. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, trend number four, the growth of creative tourism. These individuals like to be engaged in activities that also our local community is engaged in. So if there's a hotel property, if you will, in the healthy market, maybe they would partner with Splat Studio, which is an ANVO, for these travelers to help in, and maybe participate in one of the art classes that they have. So they're really looking to engage in a, some creative, interesting, local activities, which is neat. And then the strength of the luxury travel, I mean, clearly there's a growing number of millionaires. I'm not so sure about in this room. I know I'm not. But anyhow, if we were in the millionaire status, they're looking for truly a luxury travel. I don't know how that may equate to Lebanon County, but we've got to recognize that there's a huge buying power within this segment of our travelers. And then the multi-generational travel, families are traveling together. Grandparents are traveling with the, their kids and then their grandkids. So we have to accommodate ages 6 to ages 66 and beyond. What can we do to create a package or to create an experience that would be appreciated by all those age groups? So that's just something to think about. These are some of the trends, and the more we are in tune to the trends, the more we can hopefully infuse our operation to support the trends, which will in turn support the revenue coming in, which will in turn support and lower the amount of taxes that we're paying. So there's a big cycle throughout this process. So I want to invite Jill to come up here so she can continue on the rest of the presentation.
So as Mary was saying, um, visitor spending impacts our economy in many different ways. First, there is direct impact, and that's when you have people using the local hotels, the food and beverage, the retail, et cetera. They're paying money to use those facilities. The indirect impact is when those facilities go out to the local market and they go to the suppliers and the manufacturers and they purchase things. An example of that would be, say, like the Bluebird restaurant. Maybe they have a special restaurant promotion and they want to do new menus. They're going to go out to a local supplier, maybe like Quick Quality Press, and get new menus printed. So that's the indirect impact. And then the induced impact is when you have employees whose wages are paid by these sources, the folks who work in the hotel, the transportation sector, things of that sort, or also the suppliers. The people who work there, they're getting paid and they're taking their salary to go back into the local market to purchase things and spend their salary. So it's a continuous circulation of funds um, through the visitor spending. On the next slide, we're going to talk about some of the impact factors we have coming in in 2015. One group that we have coming in is the Onondaga Cycling Club. It's a bicycle group uh, that has a connection with the Lebanon Valley Bicycle Coalition. And they reached out and said, hey, we want to come to the Lebanon Valley and we want to tour your area. So they have about 40 people that are coming in in July. They're going to be staying at the Holiday Inn Express. And basically, once they stay with us, they're going to be spending just under $20,000 for four nights right here in the Lebanon Valley. And that's going back right to a local business. In addition to that, they're going to be purchasing food and beverage, going to attractions and shopping. So when it comes down to the bottom line, they're going to be spending over $27,000 just in the four days that they're here in the Lebanon Valley. We also have another group that's going to be coming in. Um, that's actually a, a big lacrosse tournament that is going to be taking place at Lebanon Valley College. This is sponsored by Corrigan Sports. <coughs> And they basically reached out to us and said, hey, we're going to need anywhere between 14 and 1,500 hotel rooms, which obviously Lebanon Valley doesn't have that many hotel rooms. But we're definitely going to share that business with Dolphin County. Uh, but you can be assured that once those folks are here in our community, they're going to be taking advantage of all of our restaurants and shopping in our retail stores and using all the assets that we have here in Lebanon County. Okay, talking about that, um, just the importance of promoting uh, travel right here in the Lebanon Valley. As Mary stated earlier, if the destination marketing organization were to put in $100,000 into promoting travel, the amount of money that could come back to us here in the local businesses could be up to $250,000. As you can see, if we would just bring a few of those travelers that maybe attended the bicycling group or the cross team, if they would decide, hey, we really like the Lebanon Valley and we're gonna come back, they will then spend additional money, which will then create new jobs and tax revenues, all right here in Lebanon Valley. All right, and on the next slide, I just wanted to bring to your attention a couple pieces of legislation that were introduced last session year. Um, these pieces of legislation House Bill 2515 would basically allow these commissioners to vote on an increase of the hotel occupancy tax. Obviously, no one likes an increase in tax, but this wouldn't be something that we would necessarily be paying. It would be the tourists that are coming into the community would be helping us raise funds to promote travel in the Lebanon Valley. And then the second bill is House Bill 1215, this creates the Pennsylvania Tourism Commission as an independent state agency. Right now, the way it's organized is the Department of Economic Community and Economic Development is in charge of promoting Pennsylvania. And the only negative side of that is every time we get a new administration, a new governor, all the plans kind of change. The whole marketing of Pennsylvania changes. 
So if we had the ability to transfer these responsibility to business professionals and people that really know the industry best, this whole process would change and we would be able to really market Pennsylvania for what it is and not have to worry about a change four years down the road. So basically, um, I'd like to just conclude by saying that <coughs> Pennsylvania brings in $37 billion in, of economic activity into the state each year. And that's why it's important that we do all that we can do to help to support the industry. So feel free to contact your legislators and voice your support for this type of legislation. Thank you.